Right. Well, I, I'm going to say a few words about deep borehole dis disposal, which is which is one of the projects that is being put forward as an alternative to the kind of force mark thing, where they take it down 500 meters and they they, For they nuclear they waste. Stack it this is nuclear waste. Yeah, high level nuclear waste. Okay. So the alternative, which was which was being pushed by quite a few people in this meeting today in Stockholm, is to drill a hole which is five kilometers deep. All right, so this is what's called deep disposal. And this hole has to be lined with stainless steel, otherwise the walls collapse into it. So you've got to like, it's like a long five kilometer tunnel. And it's not very wide, it's about 40 centimeters wide, this thing, all right? So what they do is they put steel drums with the nuclear waste in one on top of, an, of another, all the way up to three kilometers down. So from three kilometers to five kilometers, you've got these cylinders of, nu of high level nuclear waste. Now, the, the pressures down there are fantastic, and the temperature down there is also extremely high. And the salinity, that's the amount of salt in the water down there, is, is, is very high as well. So generally speaking, what will happen is that these metal cans and their stainless steel, they, is, they, they accept that they're going to corrode and disappear within 10 years. This has been accepted. And what's going to then happen is that it's all going to kind of mix in together and get squashed down to the bottom. And, and they're relying upon the idea that they can plug it with all sorts of concrete plugs from the two kilo kilometer down upwards to the surface, you see. Now there are a number of problems with this. The first problem is that if you compress all this nuclear waste, you're going to get a, a, fiss a fission reaction. You're going to get a, um, an actual, like a nuclear reactor or, or maybe even like a bomb. So there'll be either be a huge explosion or be an enormous temperature and everything will come melt and get, get mixed in together. Second thing that's going to happen, and of course the pressure from this could sh shoot all the plugs out of the stainless steel tubing, and there could be like a big, like one of these fireworks that you get at Christmas, you know, uh, what do they call it? Golden rain, okay? So they'll get golden... Uranium rain. Golden uranium, golden uranium, that would be... Uranium, yeah. 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 golden uranium. So the second possibility, the second problem is, is that, like I said before, you're going, there's going to be lots of helium because of the alpha particles. So you've got a lot of gases down there building up pressure too. This is the helium from the alpha particles. And that could also shoot the plug out. Third thing is radiolysis. So radiation gets, gets into the water and produces hydrogen and oxygen. And when they recombine at high temperature, there'll be an enormous bang. So another reason for why you might get golden rain. But how can that bang come out two kilometers? Three? Well, apart from that, it's going to certainly mix it all in with the water. Well, because you've got a stainless steel tube, that's why. Yeah, but they will plug it up in... Uh, you in can't plug up a stainless steel tube. It's like a cannon. You know, it's like plugging up a cannon. I mean, it's going to push it all upwards, isn't it? And the gases are going to go through the concrete anyway. Because the, ga the, the, the concrete is not impermeable to gas. Gas can go through the concrete. Anyway, that's so uh, what. But if they manage to plug it. If they manage to plug it, okay, then they Because ca it's uh, three kilometers down. Yeah, all right. Now it the, can explode there. All right, well, the final problem is this that as they found when they were drilling the Macondo oil well in the Gulf, when you drill down that deep, nobody knows quite what's going on. You know? Nobody's characterized the, 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 the actual ground down there, they don't know what it is. They, and, and what's happened certainly in the Gulf of Mexico was that they, they thought they could grind, go down there and pick the oil up and in fact all of the bedrock along the whole about one, two kilometer areas just completely disintegrated and collapsed and all the crap came up into the water. Okay? So that actually happened, That's, that was the BP disaster. Yeah, yeah, but we are talking sort of... Uh, um hard rocks and well stuff. that was hard rock that's seven kilometers down they drilled seven eight kilometers down this i mean like the, the depth of the, of the of the sea there is quite shallow compared to the amount of drilling that they did anyway yeah so five kilometers is quite a lot it's long. a long way down you know you're getting down near the point where you get volcanic activity and sort of hot stuff and you know all that kind of but mind. throw it into the volcano well then it'll just spew out again you'll get more golden rain won't you you know no no down down the inner volcano the volcanoes, the pressure, the pressures down there, in enormous, enormous pressures down there, and they push everything upwards. Now, the other thing that somebody said, I don't know about this, but they said that the groundwater will will become contaminated and it will come to the surface. Eventually, yeah, it will do yeah, that yeah, anyway. Yeah. 
And, and, it's un and I think it was SKB that said that, because SKB said, well, look, at least in our case, it's isolated with the copper cylinders. You can say <laughs> yeah, what you yes. like, you can say that what you is, like that about is, them, you know. That is just But bullshit. in this case, you haven't even got copper cylinders. You've got just kind of steel cylinders, which they accept are going to get crushed, and the stuff is going to be out there. Yeah, but so will the copper cylinder. It's just a matter of a couple, couple of hundred years. Well, you know what I think. I don't think they should do any of it. It should all be, it should all be stored in, 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 in recoverable, repackageable, you know, uh, situations. They should just stop making any more, take what they've got, and then put it in a mine or somewhere where they, on, on a railway truck so they can go in and out and keep repackaging. Yeah, yeah, but the people are da uh, murdering themselves out now, and uh, well, when there are no people, who will take care of it? Well, then who cares? The birds, so, the flora and fauna, yeah, well, okay. the animals. Okay, okay, okay. It's just well, the whole uh, thing is a nightmare. Yeah, you know? it is. I mean, and what else can you say? It's a nightmare. Okay, but it doesn't it doesn't make it any easier if you if you if you guarantee that it's going to get out into the environment. At least the other way, if the people are around, you can sort of say that so long as the people are there, you know, they can prevent that from happening. This is a hard one. We'll have to think about it. A bit more. There is no solution. <laughs> it's an impossible problem. But uh, we will do it the best we can, won't we? The main problem is that, is that if you move it, you, every time you move it, every time you do something to it, then, then, it, then, then it releases. So it's best to leave it as it is. And just keep putting things on top of it. Yeah. Hard, huh? Okay, well I better get off then. <laughs>